welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, today I wanted to take a look at some river pieces and as you, uh, many of you have known from a previous video that I posted, I was having a lot of trouble with the water effects, uh, the ripples that I put onto my water pieces and some of the issues with um, shipping them and uh, actually I also had another customer contact me with some concerns about them clouding up in what appeared to be cold conditions but maybe more related to humidity. So uh, what I've done is I've taken um, several river pieces and I've subjected them to probably about the harshest conditions that I could to uh, push the material to its limit so that I could see uh, you know, if it's possible to ship these the way I had been doing it uh, without them suffering any damage and also to test out some of the numerous ideas that I received as feedback to my previous video on uh, different experiments I could conduct to see if I could protect the surface better. So what I'm going to do is bring you in here and show you all the pieces that I did, explain the experiments that I conducted, and um, give you um, actually a little bit of an overview of water effects in general and some of the materials that I've been experimenting with. And I'm sure some of you might find this useful for yourself uh, when you go to do some of your own uh, terrain or dioramas. Uh, but at least I can at least uh, put it out there and show you what uh, I've learned over the past several days, week, two weeks, something like that, and, um, and let you know where I, where I plan on going with it in the future. So let's take a closer look. So here you see an array of uh, river sections that comprise several of the pieces that I've been using for the experiments. The very first thing I wanted to do was try to replicate the initial damage that I had seen in the video, uh, the photos that the customer had sent me. First thing I did was to um, take the uh, brick, oh wait a minute, first thing I did was take the brick um, wrap bubble wrap into a roll, place this on the uh, bubble wrap, and then press this onto the bubble wrap. I then put um, about a 100 watt light about a 15 inches away from the brick, and I left it like that for about mm, 8, 10, maybe 12 hours. The entire brick was warmed all the way through, so I know that the piece underneath was warm, and uh, that actually reproduced the effect almost perfectly. Now, now don't look at these ends. I'll explain what I did here, but I just want to show you in the center. Under those warmer conditions, I was able to reproduce those deep impressions that the bubble wrap was leaving. So it seemed very clear to me that the um, warming of the season is contributing greatly to softening the Mod Podge, which is the coating that I was using, am using, and um, that's what's leaving the damage. So the next step then was to try out some of the experiments that some of the customers had, uh, customers, <laughs> some maybe your customers, uh, some of the viewers at least had suggested. Here what you see is my first attempt. I took the same idea, in fact, the same piece, and I uh, put a piece of parchment paper, which is also known as cooking paper under some uh, countries. It's basically like wax paper without wax. And I thought because it was a non-stick surface, it would uh, probably pull away from the more tacky Mod Podge and might not leave any imprints. So again, brick under the warming light, eight, ten hours, peel it off, and look what happened. It appeared to me at first glance that some of the the parchment coating had come off onto the Mod Podge. That was at least what I initially thought. So, set that one aside, let's try another piece. I decided this time to try um, normal packing paper, brown wrap. I get that in part of my shipments. I save all my packing materials and reuse them when I ship out products. That's why if you've ever purchased anything from me, sometimes it's a, a bit of a menagerie of packing materials. So what I did again, roll of bubble wrap, piece of packing paper on the roll of bubble wrap brick. By the way, the brick, I did weigh it. I was curious how much it weighs. It weighs about uh, almost five pounds. It's about 4.8 ounces or so, about four and a half pounds. Put that on it, warmed it up again, another 10 hours, peel that off, and lo and behold, it looks better than the parchment paper, but still has blemished the surface in quite a number of areas. Now, two things noteworthy here. One is that the bubble wrap itself didn't leave any impressions. So it clearly was protecting it from the bubble wrap actually pushing on the, the Mod Podge. But what I think is actually happening is then the Mod Podge is conforming to the actual texture itself of the paper. And that's what's giving the very matte finish in some of these areas. Because the paper has a very subtly rough surface, it's conforming to that and leaving these little um, matte areas. Obviously that's unacceptable. So, Set that one aside. Try again. 
This time, with this piece, although it's not as wide as these pieces, it actually is probably a better test because when I put it on the bubble wrap and then placed it on here again um, with the brick, you're actually getting more force as you have less area. If anybody knows any of their um, eighth grade science, um, force is actually, um, uh, oh God, oh no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up. It's, um, it, I'm sorry, pressure is force times the area, or divided by the area. Whoops. Whew. So when you shrink the area, the amount of pressure goes way up. That's why a woman's high heel, the little spike at the bottom of that high heel is exerting incredible amount of pressure because all of her weight is concentrated on a very small point of area. In any case, um, this piece, though, had two coats of um, a um, polyurethane varnish applied to it. So after leaving that for 10 hours under the, the lights, so if you look at the surface of this river piece, it actually fared quite a bit better than the previous experiments. But still, you can see these marks right in here. It's pressed down on the Mod Podge slash polyurethane hybrid coating now and still has left a bit of a matte coat, a matte imprint. It's got a, a very slight texture but it has caused it to wrinkle a little bit where it's bulged underneath and, and tried to give way um, for the, the weight of the brick and uh, really, again, was still unacceptable. So I think after doing all of these experiments, I've come to decide, well, wait, I'll tell you my final verdict after I show you what I've learned about the actual materials themselves. Next experiment <laughs> was to actually try new materials. So here I tried um, regular Mod Podge what I've been using, standard. Mod Podge Hard Coat. This is a, a version of their product that ha, uh, that's supposed to be more protective. Um, then I tried um, a Liquitex gel. Now this is an acrylic gel that's sold for artists to blend with uh, acrylic paints to produce different kinds of effects. And then I thought, why not include Woodland Scenics water effects? This is sort of the industry standard for producing ripples and waves. Um, and I wanted to see how it compared in terms of dry time and in terms of texture, both to the Liquitex gel and also to the Mod Podge. Now, because this is on a clear plastic sheet, this is just a, a tree uh, case that I uh, cover that I'd cut off and saved for this kind of use. Um, it's, it's a little reflective, but in some ways that probably enhances the look. Looking across, you can see the Mod Podge has performed as I've normally expected it to, which is to dry pretty much 100% clear. It has a nice glossy finish, and um, it retains a lot of the ripples from the... Oh, if you hear any noise in the background, that's the dishwasher upstairs. Forgive that. Uh, but it's retained all of the um, waves that were originally in it. Here, in the Mod Podge hard coat, um, it's really dried with quite a bit of cloudiness. Um, that seems to be part of the material's properties. And uh, while it retains the ripple effect, uh, that sort of cloudiness and a little bit of a more of a satin finish rather than a glossy finish really just made it unacceptable for me to even try further than that. Of important note is to compare the Liquitex gel and the Woodland uh, Scenics water effects. I was hoping with the Liquitex gel, it has a, um, a smoother consistency than the Woodland Scenics water effects. And you can really see that difference in the actual way the ripples cascaded. I tried to start each with about a similarly sized blob and then work it down with a brush thinner and thinner and thinner so I could track the amount of time it took to cure into the thicker areas and also see what kind of effects it produces com you know, comparatively to each other. Because the Liquitex gel is quite a bit thinner than the water effects, the ripples it produces are stiffer than the Mod Podge but softer than the Woodland Scenics water effects. I really think this is going to come into a really nice use in my future experiments with rapids and waterfalls and the like, but produces ripples that are a little too steep for the gentle undulations that I've been looking for for my rivers and lakes. The uh, Woodland Scenics finished with the highest peaks. Let's see if I can bring that in. You can really see these. Let's see if it'll focus. I don't know if... It, oh, there we go. So you can see those are really stiff peaks. It produces a lot of sharp marks and it takes quite a bit of time to smooth those out if that's the effect you're looking for. Whereas here in the Liquitex gel, the effects are much subtler but still have a lot more body to it than say the Mod Podge. So I was happy to try that and get a little sense of what this material does. It is pretty expensive actually. It's probably uh, twice the price of uh, say Woodland Scenics water effects. 
But what I've noticed, and that is something I don't know is going to come through here. Let me see if I can find... I'm going to pause this for a second and see if I can find another um, backing to see if I can show the cloudiness. So here you can see the center run of the um, Liquitex gel still is cloudy. Now I did this many, many days ago. Um, in fact, I want to say I did this probably almost a week ago. And I've been trying to clear this up and I can't seem to get it clear. You can see the cloudiness in some of the smaller areas, but it's most noticeable where the areas are the thickest and the deepest. So my interest then was to how, well, how does the Woodland Scenics compare? Now, unfortunately, I spread the Woodland Scenics just a little bit thinner, so it's cleared over time a little bit better. But right here, this is a comparable thickness in this blob to the Liquitex gel. And to be honest, that's still cloudy. And I think you can see that pretty well in this shot. So dry time, the Liquitex seems to be comparable to the Woodland Scenics. Oh, hold on while I adjust the camera. And perhaps that cloudiness over time will dissipate. I'm going to keep an eye on this piece for the next several weeks. I'm going to put this in uh, front of the dehumidifier in my basement a little bit longer and see if I can get that to clear up. Uh, but um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's something to watch. It's an interesting material, and often when I'm doing ripples, I usually dry brush over the crests anyway with a little white paint to pick up some of the foam and the, and the white water look. So perhaps that cloudiness isn't going to be an issue for most of the pieces that I do, that I do this on. So where does that leave me? <laughs> well, it leaves me with something like this. I think, basically, I'm going to stick with the Mod Podge. And instead, I'm going to coat it with um, the acrylic varnish, give it one to two coats of that, and it's going to produce a more durable surface, but then I'm going to have to ship them differently than I am right now. And what I'll be doing is I'll be basically building, and this was a modified uh, idea from a suggestion that another viewer had, is I'm going to build um, a mini rack out of foam slats and then cardboard. And each rack of the foam of the uh, cardboard will then have a double-sided tape stuck down piece of river. And then another layer of uh, foam slat another river, another layer of foam slat, another river section. And then at the end, I can just do a quick tape around those with a little masking tape and have a top cover of cardboard. And these should then have a protected surface for shipping where they're not going to actually come in contact with any of the bubble wrap or the other materials in the box. And that should provide enough protection to get them to the uh, destination uh, in a good shape. And then I think with a little reasonable care on the customer end, you should have a, a lasting piece of terrain that's going to look good. And actually, I think might be even a little bit easier to clean in the end because this gloss varnish smooths this surface out, takes away a little bit of the tackiness, and uh, actually gives it um, a really nice look and also adds a little bit of durability to the softness of the Mod Podge. Don't know what happened just there, but um, I had a little power surge and I blew both of my halogen bulbs I used for lighting. So I swapped out the lighting a little bit so I could finish the video. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to do a quick wrap up um, and just uh, say that um, once again, I just wanted to thank everybody who contributed suggestions to the potential uh, fix for the problem. Uh, I got a lot of great ideas and it really gave me some nice things to try out and at least, and while many of them did not prove to be a solution, it was nice to be able to really rule them out as possible avenues to pursue and know exactly what's uh, happening with the material a little bit better. I feel like I understand the water effect materials available on the market a hell of a lot better now than I did when I started this whole problem about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, but it has taken up quite a bit of my time to try to work through, so uh, I'm glad to sort of um, come up with a solution and move forward from it now so that um, I can actually get back to actually putting some water pieces out. So thank you once again for joining me. I hope you learned something a little bit about some of the materials that are available for water effects. Um, if you've been using material that I didn't discuss today and it was something that you think you'd be interested in sharing with me, I'd love to hear. I'm always interested in some of the materials and, and things that people are using out there. Um, it's, it's, there's no one master out there, really. I think there's something for everybody to learn. And I'm always eager to get new ideas, especially from um, video viewers, as, as uh, this project has certainly shown me. Um, and of course, if you ever want to see any pictures of any of the work that I do, you can always go to terrencecapes.com. There's contact information there. You can email me, mike at terrencecapes.com.